Welcome back, or welcome to the For You podcast. Um, basically, this is the first episode. Uh, it's not going to be, this isn't going to be something that is going to take very long before we get into the guest that you guys see on the title and the reason you clicked on this more than likely. Um, I hope to make sure that you guys come back and that that is my job here. But you know what? Man, this this episode, it's already it's pre-recorded, recorded it earlier, but this is crazy. This is I I want I wanted there to be something that I could talk before we get into it because I don't want to take a lot of people's time up. Um, I want to make this short form. That's why it's called the For You, because you guys know the For You page on on TikTok. And this this it's gonna primarily live on TikTok um, with highlights and stuff like that. But we're gonna put the long form, the raw format up uh, for you guys to just listen to. Just sit back. This is definitely definitely the guy that you're gonna want to sit back, listen to, have a good time, uh, drink drink some water, drink some tea, something like that. And uh, just vibe out. You can, you can eat. We're all for it here. So, uh, Stan, man, man, this this episode is so great, so great. I'm I'm super proud of how this came out, the conversation, the direction that we went in. Um, I'm super proud of of this dude in general. Uh, we we haven't known each other for a long time. Um, I'm not sitting here being his day one homie, but but man. This guy has a rare, a rare uh, talent that he's just, he's just one of, he's one of us. Like he's just everyone uh, who, who has good, good in their heart. And um, he does a lot for a lot of people just by being himself. And uh, he, he helps inspire and, um, uh, I, I don't want to knock him at all because uh, this isn't meant to, but he just seems like another guy. And that that speaks a lot of volume for his character and um, who who he is as a person because it's not every day that you, you feel as if someone uh, gives you hope to to make it in a place where it's comfortable. And I know, I know he's not comfortable and satisfied with what he does, and that is why uh, he's inspiring. Um, because he has some things that people don't, but he wants more, and he's gonna keep working, and that is that is amazing. So, enough about the guests. You know, uh, this podcast is, like I said, primarily gonna live on TikTok. Um, just, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, an interesting thing. But you guys are going to have the long form on YouTube uh, right here or Spotify or iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. I'm going to have some people that I admire just like this one uh, where it's going to be a good, interesting conversation because my thought process on this is not a lot of people. Uh, you know, when you go into his live streams, Stan, he's he's going to be talking and he's going to have his character out there, but uh, not all the time do you get a get to pick his brain and um a lot of these tiktok guys are willing to do stuff like this uh, because they just they're new to things like this and and they want to talk and they want to they want to reach out to the fans and i think it's a great opportunity to have longer in-depth conversations um because they're on a platform that only allows 60 seconds so yeah you get to hear his opinions on warzone but you actually get to know the person behind all those opinions um and that's really nice to be able to and i'm very lucky to have this conversation and be able to have a little bit of a conversation in between the the um the topics and stuff and before the podcast the to kind of shoot the shit um and it was very nice this guy is very humble and very uh well mannered to the point of he's he's got good people who raised him and uh i don't know that situation with him but he uh he definitely has a good good supportive life around him and he's got his priorities in check and i'm i'm glad to hear uh stuff like that because not all the time do you see someone who you're truly like can say that you're proud of what they're doing and you're you can sit back and admire and know that they're gonna 
they're going to make it far. So this guest, very special to me, very special uh, because I'm a, I'm a fan of this guy. And I was super excited, super happy that I had this conversation. We had a, we had a pretty long conversation and it was very nice. So there's going to be, intri- I mean, there's going to be parts that are cut out um, for different reasons. Um, uh, some technical difficulties. This is the first one that I've actually um, done myself and I'm going to be editing and putting out there for you guys to hear. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep putting these out. I'm going to try to do once a week. Um, but just be on the lookout. Yeah. Um, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Guys, I wasn't trying to make this very long, but here we go. The Stan Man 34 podcast. Enjoy. So, I mean, we'll just get it started here. Uh, of course. Welcome back to the podcast. This is this is a dream right here. I, I watch this dude. I, I want to get this out of the way. Um, on TikTok, man, I get all my Warzone from you, from Sally. I got all the burger. Like, wacky, obviously. Wacky's the homie. But, um, yeah, this is this is crazy. We got Stan Man. 34 what's up with the 34 honestly man it was it's funny so many people asked me about it and it, it was just you know i was i always wanted to be stan like i was like if i if if i could be like just one game name like just having the name stan but i mean you know how hard that is it's like having the name mike yeah. <laughs> on all social so it's impossible yeah. so i was like exactly. i was like i was just thinking of names that people called me and i was like stan man i was like you know i don't really like it but it kind of flows but Stan Man's kind of basic, and I'm like, so I just 34 is my favorite number growing up because I was a huge sports guy mm-hmm. growing up. That's all I did was play sports. Yeah. And uh, Paul Pierce, just for whatever reason, became kind of like my favorite basketball player. And it really like I watched it for like two years, and then I'm just like I fell in love with the number. It just became part of my identity. Yeah. And I just kind of ran with it ever since. Yeah. Do you ever? To be honest. Do you ever? Because I like I have these moments where I sit here and I look at my gamer tag or what people call me and i'm like damn i wish i would because i can't go back now like we're way we're in way too deep i feel like you're in the same situation like you can't just be like now on twitch i'm this guy and like i have a different name do you ever look at your name and wish you would have done something different with it i mean of course i mean there's always you know it's like the people make jokes out now that I have like man in my name, dude, there's like, you know, meat man, meta man, like people, people yeah. run with jokes and, yeah. and they're funny. Like there's, there's things I always wish I could have like for branding purposes. I wish I could have done something differently, but the way I look at it is like, it just kind of represents something I started with. And the fact that it is where it is now is like super cool to me. I mean, obviously there's a million things I'd love to change, but it's just part of, it's almost like, you know, having a favorite number is just like part of my brand It's part of what I've done. It's part of what I've yeah. built. So it's, it's kind of tailored to it. Yeah. I think the, the biggest thing for me, like I always, I kind of get in those situations where everyone's having the same joke. And like, when mm-hmm. I go ask for, for me, the biggest thing was going to get branding done or like graphics done. And people always did the same thing because of my name is texture. So they always want to put some weird texture on the thing. So like you said, the, the concept like meat man and stuff like that, Mm. like the over and over jokes that get really older are pretty annoying. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. So how, how are you doing first off? Like how, how is, how is Stan doing, um, waking up every morning and, and turning that go live button on? I'll tell you what, I, you know, I constantly have to check myself because like my situation is unique and I don't know how informed you are. Um, just my situation now I'm a junior at uh, Michigan state, Mm -hmm. so I'm still taking classes. I mean, doing the work to get by. Yeah. I'm like, I'm doing it barely, but I'm a junior at Michigan state. Um, supposed to be up there living with my five best boys that I've been friends with my whole life. But my mom is a stage four terminal breast cancer patient. And uh, we got news like two months ago, a month ago that, you know, the end of the year might not look so good. So I'm staying home. So I'm in her basement. You know, I got a great setup. I can't complain. I got, you know, their Wi-Fi routers right next to me. I got two hardwired PCs, you know, 500 down. Yeah. I'm, I'm big chilling. I'm big chilling for the most part. But um, there's a lot of my plate. And I think, you know, that's just life. 
that's yeah. just life and the way i always check myself is kind of just like you know if i would have told myself a year ago you know yeah you know you're gonna have a little bit of hardships but you know you would have established yourself as a little bit of a streamer you know you made some ground in becoming a streamer would you have been happy and i'm like absolutely so i'm blessed to be honest but you know we all got our shit. okay back to what i was saying that people people don't know that there's a human behind it and that mental health when as i was getting into streaming mental health is has to be up there top five of of priorities you know mm -hmm. um a lot of times when i didn't stream or anything it was it, it wasn't necessarily that i didn't have the motivation or i didn't want to it, it's it's kind of that i had to make sure that i was okay and i was I was there mentally because I didn't want to obviously produce something that, um, that I wasn't proud of. And with you, like you, you produce content. I don't, is your schedule for TikTok like every day? Yeah, pretty much consistently depending on, you know, the trends and everything else. I've been trying to post somewhere between, you know, one to three times a day, but it, you know, it's tough to I mean, you hit yeah. the creative wall there too as well there, for sure yeah and um people if you if you took like a break they're not gonna ask which it's not like you're seeking out for it but they're not gonna ask like yo are you okay like they're just gonna be like mm -hmm. where the where the fuck are the videos you know exactly and, and so which i've i've been in that situation too like i'm fans of a lot of people where i'm like but then you kind of gotta once you get in that situation um, you kind of realize that maybe these people who are taking breaks aren't, isn't just cause they don't love it anymore. It's maybe they're going through something. And, and I think that's really important for, for people, uh, to realize that not all the time is it just that you don't like this or you know, you're not motivated. It's kind of other shit that's going on. That's, that's the hard part about streaming is a lot of people don't understand it's, you know, for, to really establish yourself too in the beginning, if you don't have a massive exterior platform, and even if you do have a massive exterior platform, you know, establishing a solid Twitch audience isn't easy. You know, being yeah. a constant entertainment for six, seven hours isn't easy. And uh, it's like, I never really understood it until it's like you said, it's like, you know, even like, you know, with Nick or someone would take a week off. I'm like, what, you know, what are they doing? You know, they play yeah. video games for a living. I'm like, yeah. what, what, what excuse do they have to not turn on the mm. button for four or five hours? And then you're like, I'm doing it now, man. I'm like, holy fuck. You're like, God, there's just some days you get back here and you're like, keeping that high energy for six, five, six, seven hours at a time is yeah. straight up borderline draining. And on top of everything else, like if you're someone my age or, you know, our age and you got other things outside of life, outside of streaming, like it can really quickly take over your mental health. Like I said, if you don't keep that in check. Yeah, that's, I think it's really important that uh, people take that time to, to realize before they get to the, the burnout where it's not even fun anymore, you know, mm -hmm. take that time to realize that they they could like do things in the moment to help them in the future by by taking breathers and and kind of sitting back and not be so go 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 every time because like you can put too much energy into it you know and and yeah, that can absolutely that can burn you out and like i just feel that if you like truly love this like you still got to moderate your like, cause there's only a couple people who can, who can just do it nine, 10 hours a day forever. Like, um, I, I see summit always, always is streaming and he's always streaming for so long. Like he, he yeah. has something that a lot of people don't, and you gotta, you gotta, gotta kind of realize what, like who you are and who, what you can yeah. do. I think that's really important for, for the longevity of things like this no 100 percent. and i think a big thing of it too is just like you know not getting caught up in the numbers when you're playing other games like summit can just kind of play anything and yeah. people will watch that and he can kind of just enjoy himself on stream and that's what so many streamers don't do they yeah. play the games with numbers and, and then they get caught into the rat race and i and i i recognize that with you 
I see you. I I sit here and watch you play Assassin's Creed. I yep. sit I sit here and and I I realize that you want to play that game, so you're gonna play that game. Exactly. And I know that when when you're playing Warzone, that that's because you want to play Warzone. And you were mm-hmm. you were gonna play it no matter what if it if it went up or it went down. You know. Yeah. If it was good for you. Like if you liked it and that that's that's impressive and I gotta give you props for that. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is I try to tell streamers now. I'm like, it's hard and it's so hard to say because it's like, you know, they're like, Well, that's where the viewership is and you're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. You know, I fell in love with a game that had really high viewership and something that I'm very good at. It was you know, it was the best of both worlds. But I think once, you know, you do establish yourself in a game or even like even a smaller community like Jay Z Kanja is like one of my boys, um, Super Smash. I mean, he, he can hold fifty people playing Super Smash Bros. You know, it's a super small game. Like you don't have mm-hmm. to play the game that Nick Merckx is playing yeah. to to become a streamer. And so many kids think that's the only way to do it, and they just end up exhausting the game and burning out. And I'm just like, you just got to stay fresh. Like streaming's about you at the end of the day. You want to build an audience that revolves around you, not the game that you're playing. Yeah. And so many kids just don't understand that. I think I think there is some give and take to that though, because it it, it depends on necessarily where you're at. Like it, I get that it would be really really difficult to to get on this game that has seventy five people watching it and it's held by no, one sure. one streamer and then get m- more people. But I feel like I feel like there's a time and a place where you got to be like, man, I'm not. I wouldn't stream anything that I wouldn't don't enjoy. Like that's mainly my dilemma when when going into that ten minute. Am I am I gonna stream yet or that? I'm gonna. I it's got to be something. I got to be on that that like high that I'm like, all right, I love this. Like I'm gonna have fun no matter if there's one person in here or fifty. Like I'm gonna have fun because I enjoy playing this game. And I think. I think that's one thing that I look back at and kind of wish that or like kind of reminisce on is like not playing a game because I want to stream it or like not playing a game because I want to make content on it. Like just playing a game to play the game and like mm-hmm. all the lights off, like not having to have all this fancy equipment around me and just lock into a game. That's that's what made me fell in love. That's with like video games and that's what made me want to take it further. You know what I'm saying? No, of course. And and it's hard. And I totally disagree with you because, you know, I was an avid gamer and then, you know, I wanted to make money off it. And the second you start making money off it, you know, that kind of hobby slash passion mentality almost goes out the door and it becomes a business and you start acting like a business. Mm -hmm. And I try to balance it as best as I can, both, you know, just for longevity of my career and just, you know, the overall quality of my stream because I've I experienced burnout really hard with Fortnite making content. Yeah. You know, I thought I was going to be the next T food, and you know, obviously a million kids did. Mm-hmm. And I knew when Warzone was coming out, I'm like, this is my game. I'm like, I'm, this could be really be my game, and it's proven to be everything more that I could have asked for. Mm-hmm. But that being said, you know, I've got like twenty four days played or something. Like, yeah. I haven't put that much time into a damn video game since like I don't I don't know when. I mean it's exceeded my limit for sure. Yeah. So it's just kind of trying to find a happy balance. I know a lot of people trash on Modern Warfare. It's a big joke for everyone. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I do gotta give it, I gotta give it so many so much props for we haven't had a game where people people were still on it this long. You know, Mm -hmm. especially from the community that I'm from, I'm from the sniping side of, of call of duty. Uh, that's where I've made my, my, that's my bread and butter right there. Um, Mm -hmm. usually we have everyone gone. Like the snipers will, will by this time be on older call of duties. Um, and that's just what they do, but I still see it every single day where, I think it's I think it's a movement of you know Warzone being being good and um like people actually playing it and giving Call of Duty recognition 
mm-hmm. to to like inspire ki- younger kids to to follow that path and and keep on Warzone and and I'm like we talked about before uh, before the podcast. Oh, I'm excited to see what what Warzone can do in the in the new Call of Duty, but also it kind of makes me nervous. Um, no, definitely. I don't want them to change too much and like make it different, you know? No. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's a big question for everyone right now. And to your point about just playing this late, I think I've said this a lot and I've stressed this a lot over the past couple of months, but you can't undervalue the impact it has that Nick Merckx swag, Tim, the tap man, Tifu, you know, the top arguably, you know, probably 10 at least of the top 25 creators on Twitch, you know, and or, you know, mainstream content on YouTube are making Call of Duty content in September. Yeah. And I get it. Modern Warfare multiplayer's got a great, you know, search and destroy. It's, you know, it's got a great skill based matchmaking for that. The snipers are loving that. A lot of people are loving that. I've been very critical of Modern Warfare multiplayer because of skill based matchmaking. Cause I'm a pub stopper. I like yeah. going in and I like, you know, running up a 30 kill streak. And that's not possible when I have a 3.2 KD and I'm getting placed against, you know, seven, eight other 3.2 KD guys. So I'm critical of it, but I understand why from a business perspective it's happening and it's working. And I don't see it going away in the foreseeable future, which is why I'm happy that, you know, there's something like Warzone to at least kind of tailor to an experience towards someone like me. Yeah. Um and I think I think we just I think we just ruined it by by blowing this up and making it making it super successful in in a good way. We ruined it in a good way because now they look mm-hmm. at it as the first game that they really marketed skill-based matchmaking and that it was that it was pretty evident that it was there that yeah. now all this is happening, which it's yeah. it's great for people like you who who made the money on it, like who got this community and, but now we're sitting here being like, all right, like take it away now. But they're, yeah, they're not, like, they're not on. gonna, they're not gonna. No. And, and that's a and shame, but. It's the same thing. It's like you said, it's like, it's like the same. I don't want to go down the road of politics, but you know, it's the silent majority. It's like, I saw a chart. I think it came across my discord. Like, you know, of the 70 million you know, Warzone players in the past three months, like 95% had less than a 1.2 KD. I'm like, that's not even a fathomable number to me. Like that there's yeah. over, you know, 50 million people that might have a negative KD on the, <laughs> on one of the biggest like battle rails right now. And I'm out here sitting here with like a 3.5 trying to bring it down for tournaments and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, now I get it why I'm, you know, I'm getting criticized for saying, you know, this gun sucks, you know, blah, blah, blah. Skill based <laughs> yeah. matchmaking sucks. I'm like, the majority of kids fall into that thing. And that's just something that us as creators and other people have to notice. Like, there aren't many people above the age of 20 consistently logging on and playing Warzone on a day in, day out basis. You know, there is a lot, there's a big community, but the majority are young kids. And it always will be that way for the most part. Yeah, which is just the tale of the gaming industry. Mm-hmm. I, I do want to ask you, what do you think the most consistent gun? Because we saw a lot of meta changes. We got, you know, the foul, the Bruin. We had all these mm-hmm. different crazy swings. What was the most consistent gun for you that you could have used on day one and and today? I mean, I think. I think everyone would give you the same answer here. And it's really that M4. I mean, that M4 was a dump truck in the beginning of the game. I mean, it really was. And then they kind of, they brought it back a little bit so other guns could compete. Um, I still use the Q. I used the Q a lot when multiplayer came out and I didn't like it in the beginning of Warzone. I don't know if they've been silent buffing and nerfing or whatever. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of different things regarding that, but I can't speak on it. But for me, it's always been that M4. What What did the M13 do to you? You know, okay, <laughs> man. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, think I didn't even BBs. think this was gonna blow up. <laughs> you want to talk about something that just 
blew up into something that I had no idea that <laughs> this was going to be <laughs> one thing. I was just like, you know, this gun sucks. I kept picking it up and having to shoot 40 bullets. I'm like, I'm pissed. So I'm just like, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to attack this gun. So I saw people using custom loadouts and holy shit. I mean, I, they, I get tagged in every single creator's video now with the <laughs> M13. I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I made an M13 video in three weeks. I'm like, cut the, pump the brakes here. I'm like, come on now. But it's, you know, it's an okay gun. I mean, there's, there's always that gun in every Call of Duty, right? Yeah. That's got no, no recoil, a decent damage. Oh, damage I think, range. I think it's, it's, a balance you know like if it's got no recoil it's got to be it's got to be weak as shit well, absolutely be, and that's yeah. what people don't get they're like they're like well it's great because it's got no recoil i'm like that's the reason it doesn't yeah, do any damage over like 30 feet yeah i'm like but i get it yeah i i i don't really know why but the kilo for me man i can't do it i can't do the kilo it's a common thing, and it's funny you say that, and I, I'll tell you why. I'm not sure if you actually know why, but I can tell you this. The kilo to recoil pattern is direct opposite of the M4. Oh, really? Instead of up to the right, which is basically like most Call of Duty AR's recoil pattern goes up, and then it shoots right. That's just kind of how it's always been. The kilo, for whatever reason, goes up, and it shoots like left, and people like just don't mess with that. And I, I get it. I totally get it. Cause me, I'm I'm a mounting manny, man. I've you see me, I see a wall, I'm I'm hopping right on it and I'm mounting on it. So like recoil patterns for me are like I'm kinda like, yeah, I'm like, I'm mounting with MP5s around corners. I will abuse that system. What, so it's not a big deal. What are what's the what's the future look like for you? Like what is there a place that you wanna be? Is there a certain thing you wanna do? Like yeah. any upgrades in the content like what what can we expect you know the big thing for me is i'd love to i'd love to be a part of an org um i don't know in what capacity that is you know for me i think my future is a live streamer i think that's where my bread and butter is is content just my ability to entertain for hours on end i'm not good at faking you know reactions faking content you know even tiktok's a stretch for me people are like <laughs> well, that's your bread and butter i'm like Dude, I sit by my phone and just like yell at people. I'm like, that's really all I do. I'm like, it's really not even me. I'm like, you come in my Twitch and it's like, it's really, it's two different people. Yeah. And I understand that. But I want to be a live streamer. Like, I, I really, you know, Nick Merckx has kind of always been my inspiration since ever since I got into the space. Um, just that ability to have a community like that, that not only makes a difference in the world, but makes a difference for, you know, people that are a part of it is everything I dream of and more. Because, yeah. you know, just that it's it's such a cool thing to see, you know, what he's done for Biffle and what he's done for Neo and what he's doing for, you know, guys that work for him and in his community and and he probably even stuff behind the scenes that we don't even know about. So I if for me, I'm gonna keep plugging away, keep streaming. Hopefully, you know, we get to a point where I can make a full time decision. But for now it's just Call of Duty, streaming TikTok. Yeah, I, I do. What what is what is your upgrade path through? Is there certain things you want to upgrade in the quality? Um, mm -hmm. What's that? What's that looking like in your head? I mean, as of right now, I have a pretty good setup. The second I started making money from Twitch, I immediately flipped it back into my setup, like mm -hmm. hard. Because yeah. I just, I, I'm, you know, I'm a business guy and I, I say this to anyone that watches this or I say this to even you, once you start making money, the best thing you can start doing for yourself is investing in yourself and doing it the right way. I mean, I immediately built the behemoth of a PC, switched my gameplay to PC. Um, I've been a console gamer my whole life. I just switched two months ago. Um, you know, three monitors, the whole nine yards. I've got the whole shebang. Obviously, I would like a little bit better production, a little bit just better overall stream stuff but you know i'm working with that probably invest in something through vbi i love what they did with lucci's you know lucci's branding lucci's sub badges stuff like that overall i wanted to have like a, a professional feel even though i'm a scuffed personality but, yeah you know i want i want the other things aside of it to look at yeah. least like okay this guy knows what he's doing at least yeah i think um 
Well, is Sally using his headset mic? Is that is that a thing? I think Sally might, yeah. I think he might. Sally's setup is super scuffed. He's he, super scuffed. I love dude, Sally. This dude is <laughs> like I think he's over one million on TikTok, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. He's at like one point one, one point two maybe. Congrats to that guy. But he's a legend. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I know I know that's his I know that's his headset mic. I know that. But yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that's that's the beauty of this now. Like um someone can use the headset mic and and still it's not it's not at all what like what you use it like it's really people don't really understand like they say like i don't got this i don't got that but like everyone who's at the top has made you just gotta make it work and just Mm -hmm. for the time being and like everyone because i i up i'm primarily youtube and i uploaded like like a hundred videos or something like that in a row, a hundred days. And I only had like a laptop. Like I wasn't doing anything off of, I had a USB mic and a laptop and yeah. I just, I just had to, I loved it more than anything. Like I didn't care how many views I was getting or anything. I just, it was just because like, I just wanted to do it. So I feel like that's, if you just want to do it, you, you gotta, you gotta make it work too. That's such a big thing, and it's such a big thing in creating content and just the social media landscape and streaming. You got to have a fucking passion, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, does this – it kicks the shit out of you. There's super high highs, and there's super low lows. And even for someone like me, people are like, you have no reason to bitch. I'm like, you, you want to continue that upward trajectory and just kind of continue what you're doing. And it's not easy. It's not easy, and – if you don't love it, it's just it won't work. Yeah, it never will, and it'll show. So you you were talking about um, Nick Merckx. Is that is that the top guy for you? Is that is that your? I, I mean, yeah. If yeah, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put someone up there, if I'm gonna put someone on a pedestal, in terms of you know what they've done, in terms of like an idol in the space for me, yeah, I love not only how he handles himself socially, I, I love how he handles himself personally too. Yeah. Um, so what about moving towards this? We see the, the, the TikTok boom where a lot of creators going there, um, whether it's from a different platform or starting there, um, we're kind of seeing the first, I think maybe we'll, we're in like the second wave of people, like, cause we had that first one of like dancers and then people realized mm-hmm. like, Hey, we can start, we can start other things here. Like we got like gaming TikTok, we got you know, our boy Carter over there on Carter PC. Yeah. The tech, the the tech talk. Yeah. Um, yep. What, like, who's, who's that for you? If we're excluding everything, but TikTok, who's, who's the top guy for you that, that made it through TikTok and that like inspires you. Oh. It could be, it could be just like a peer, like your friend, but like who yeah. inspires you to work, work more and harder every day? No, I mean, when I came to the space, it was I went. In, I started early March, I want to say, and the only true gaming guy that I saw at the time was Burger, and I saw what he was doing kind of via Twitch, via you know TikTok, and I was like, "There's something here." I'm like, "There's something here that I don't think people took advantage of," and I started, you know kind of running with it kind of running with just like a personality clips like i never i still have really i've never really posted gameplay on my main channel to that day people are like what like how and so he was kind of my inspiration to just like pursue tiktok and see what it would do and funnel that to twitch and i still think i have the dms from when we first talked and it was he was kind of like i put him on like a super high pedestal and i was like i was really respecting what he was doing and I did it myself and it ended up, you know, obviously working out and then some. Yeah. Do you, so we've been through a couple of different um, kind of rumors that, that TikTok's going to go away. And yeah. I'm sure you've heard of things like that. Is that, yeah, yeah. is that a scary feeling for you? Is that nerve wracking at all? This is what I'll say. I'm, for me personally, I got on TikTok 
to advertise. Yeah. I, the way I saw it, I was like, you are allowed to post as much content as you want for free to a specific niche and the quality and to how many people it gets out to is completely up to the amount of effort that you put in. Mm -hmm. And so everything that I've gotten from TikTok is a blessing yeah. personally, because it, it, it's established myself as, you know, maybe not exactly a known streamer or even a known name on TikTok, but it's gotten my name out there. So it's at least known in the space. And that's all I could have ever asked for. Yeah. Does it suck that the idea that I might not have, you know, that type of marketing anymore? Absolutely. And I think that's something that it really sucks for smaller creators because all it's going to do is make it harder. Yeah. All it's going to do is make it harder. Taking away short form films is it, it's been the, it's how every major creator has ever come to be. I mean, Logan Paul, David Dobrik, every single guy that's big in the social media space now came from Vine. And that's what people forget. It, it, very few of those guys were established on YouTube before that. Yeah. So I, I think I, it just makes the space a lot harder. I think those days of um, kind of making yourself on YouTube is is very difficult. And then you, you throw mm -hmm. Twitch into there. Like, can you imagine just trying to solely do Twitch? Just solely do yeah. Twitch and, and start from there? Like... Twitch is one of those things that like there's there's very little discoverability on Twitch. Like yeah. you could, but how many times have you scrolled? Have you personally scrolled through like a a game and then just picked a random person? Like it does it just no. doesn't happen. No. You go to your no, following, yeah. You go to I your won't. following and you you click on someone and maybe do you go into recommended channels and like kind of browse through that? Maybe it's yeah there's and and i know i'm not on the recommended channels i know no one's like finding me yeah, through recommended it's... channels so it's like the taking away like you said the the marketing kind of like you're pretty much marketing yourself and mm. and like what like if you want more of this then come over to my twitch like but i think your perspective on it's really good i think the way that that you realize that they didn't have to even make the platform in the first place to let you do this. And the fact that mm -hmm. you, you got a huge win out of it. Um, even if it shut down today, I feel like you would still click that go live button and probably, probably be a crazy stream. Like, no, I mean, I mean, I'm still, yeah. Even without me posting on TikTok, I'm rolling, you know, 250, 70 guys off the rip. You know, obviously that number varies by day, but yeah, to have, you know, 200 plus people come into a live stream with no exterior marketing for me is yeah i mean that's all you can ask for man yeah i mean that's a, it's no complaint in there exactly know? and and just to i feel like you gotta you gotta have that perspective for real otherwise it, it's gonna it would probably tear you down in a way um and it, it would be very difficult to go ahead because you're like, well, that, that got me here. Like, I, I'm not going to go anywhere by myself. Like, I feel like no. your, your perspective is the only perspective to win in this situation. Yeah. And so many people get so upset about it. I'm like, they're like, well, you, you know, you, you're established on TikTok. I'm like, okay, listen up here, bucko. Um, TikTok's never going to pay the bills. It just won't. Not for me. You know, not for someone with less than a million followers. And even people with a million followers don't have the engagement to get the type of brand deals to pay the bills. So 99% of people are going to try to establish themselves on it. You don't want to be known as the TikTok guy. And I'm like, that's how we're known now. But like, that's not going to be your bread and butter for years to come. That's not how you're going to be. That's not how you're going to be able to make it. That's not going to be anything. You need to go to other platforms. You need to go to YouTube. You need to go to Twitch, you know. Go to Instagram if you really want to do that way. You have to use it as a form of marketing because it's never going to be taken seriously by super big companies. And people forget that. Do you think so? Like going into a traditional celebrity kind of area when when mm -hmm. or like acting, for example, and like Hollywood movies, when a YouTuber tries to infiltrate infiltrate the uh, the system of that. Um, there's mm -hmm. kind of their stigma around, you know, being a YouTuber and 
and like is there any stigma from being from TikTok, you know, going from TikTok to Twitch? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I've seen it. There's literally clips of Tim and Nick talking about me, and it's just like there's a TikTok guy that sounds like you, Nick. Like he's from TikTok. And I'm like, you know, I get it. I'm like, right? That's where my audience is established. Like, completely mm-hmm. understand that. It's like even Face Blaze. It's like when he talks about like Lucci or any of us, great guy. Love him. He's, you know, one of the most humble guys in the scene. But it's like, you know, they're the TikTok guys, you know. And we do that to ourselves. But at the same time, it's like, it's like what I said earlier. It's like, that's where my brand was established first. That's my largest mm-hmm. following. At the moment, it makes sense. It, 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 I am a TikTok guy, essentially. Yeah. But that's why I'm working and streaming every day to establish myself on other platforms. Yeah, I think that's... It, I mean, at least, like, just talking to you more and more, I realize that, like, you you got a good head on your shoulders. And, like, from from talking, you know, saying that it's a business and you you realize that you got to do certain things and sacrifice certain things and uh you know who you are and how you want to market that and i think that's super important and it's hats off to you because uh, it's super impressive to see someone come in um kind of like you have i i bet i know you you've been here longer than like your whole career is just not on tiktok um mm-hmm. but it's super impressive to come into kind of more followers if you if you will uh, i didn't want to say fame or anything like that but no yeah yeah um but it's super impressive that you you can you can come in here and have have that you know humble feel to you and and not have the super big ego and it's it's nice and refreshing you know um so where where does that come from is that something that someone installed in you um or is it is it just kind of how you how you are? I always say it like this, man. And people, and even my, it's funny you say that. It's because so many of my, you know, IRL friends um, are like, wow, you're so famous on TikTok. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, right. Okay, so I have 130,000 followers, probably 129,000 of them are male. And <laughs> I make an ass of myself on the internet daily i'm like okay i get it i'm like i have a following on social media but at the end of the day if that's what makes if that's what gives you like gratification as a person that you're a followed individual and you don't have like genuine relationships in life and like genuine you know experiences you're just looking for that superficial i made it then I mean, you're just looking at it the wrong way, my guy. I mean, for me, it's just like I'm building a brand around doing something that I love doing. And the way I see it, I was like, there's 130,000 people that believe in the vision that I believe in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's different on TikTok than it is on Twitch. And when people go, they understand that. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that's just a number. And we live in a society that perpetuates that that number means so much more than it does. But mm-hmm. It's like we were just talking about TikTok could literally cease to exist in seven days. So what? I went from being famous to, so am I not famous anymore? What's up? Like, (laughs) because I just lost the the 130,000 followers. It's like, that's my point. It's like, it's just, you're established on one platform that you've found a way to market yourself well on. Yeah. You're still realistically nothing you got to keep working. You got to keep earning. Yeah. I feel like just don't get that. mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you said some of the things you did there, like, uh, that people aren't having real experiences and like that you got to live a real life. And I, I feel, I get that vibe from you. Like there's, there's kids and you've seen it. We've both seen it who just, who lack that, that human interaction or like, I know, I know I, I saw the vacation stand. I, I mm-hmm. know, I know you're out in the lake yeah. and that's, that's where, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm in, I'm in the Midwest. I'm in Iowa. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah, so there we go. 
so we got likes and i mean it's not really awesome here but <laughs> um yeah we got likes and like that's that's my summer too like we're going out in the lake we're having we're having fun you know me and the girl going out in the lake and just chilling and it's it's nice no. to take a break from this stuff it's no and that's the that's the thing and it's like we said it's like we said earlier on it's like there's so much more to a person than behind the stream yeah. you don't like i try the way i've tried to build my brand is that i try to get people to know me as much as possible in the midst of me playing video games which is different than the normal approach of trying to just make it off of being an asshat or make it off of being a personality yeah. i want people to feel like they know who i am understand my vision understand why i'm doing the things that i'm doing so that it honestly creates a better experience for you and for the viewer and yeah, I answer a lot of deep questions, but of course, I mean, I have a life outside of this. Well, I did. I don't anymore, but I did <laughs> in the summer, you know, doing stuff and hanging out with my buddies. But now it's been, you know, seriously hunkering down and trying to take advantage of what's here so that I can do this for, you know, the rest of my life. Yeah. And is that the goal for you is to Absolutely. do this? I Absolutely. Think I think, and I had this conversation with uh, with one of my closest friends about about the streaming, and it's really it's really not for everyone, you know. No. Oh. And and that that person, in my eyes, who it's who it's made for is the person who who loves it so much and doesn't want to do anything but, I mean, obviously other things, but like who really is super passionate and and who has that high energy for for you know hours on end and who mm -hmm. can who can really endure because streaming like you said before about like when big streamers don't stream and it's like what well, how can you how can you not want to do this like it's it's so easy all you do is playing video games but it's obviously way more than that it's yeah it's energy like after a stream sometimes i'm just like all right it's time to go to sleep because I'm, no, I'm dead. Fucking dead. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, done. So I think I think it's my main point in in saying all this is that it's really not for everyone, and I'm and I'm glad that I feel like you can do it. You know, I'm I'm glad that I can feel that energy from you and that that passion. It it really shines through, and I I don't want you to to feel like it's going unnoticed because I notice it. I, I pick apart things that you do and I, I'm super I feel like it's a project that I'm just like watching from afar, but I, I it's it means something to me to see you doing no. doing good and being that I appreciate that. No, I appreciate that a lot, man. I really, really do and it, it means a lot that even you know, you would say that. It's it's like you said, it's it's really not for everyone. Like yeah. it's it's just it's just not and it's it's like people are always like, well, would you rather sit in an office from nine to five? I'm like, okay, listen up, you dickhead. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you sit up in an office from nine to five. How in that period of nine to five, how much are you actually applying yourself? I'm like, let's just cut it straight. I'm like, you're probably working, you know, of those eight hours, maybe, maybe five, potentially six, if it's an actually demanding job. Yeah. And then you have lunch breaks, you know, God knows how long you're on the shitter whatever else it's just like you're on in the big guys like nick's on for 10 8 to 10 hours a day and he fucking high intensity high energy high gameplay and i'm like it's draining to do it and you just don't understand until you're actually a part of it yeah all right well i appreciate you stopping in and talking to me it was it was a dream come true um i uh, where they can find you on any social media. Are you all social media, Stan Man Thirty Four? Yeah, basically Stan Man Thirty Four. You'll find anything. Yeah. There's some with two ends, but it's just <laughs> Stan Man Thirty Four. You, you'll find it, man. I promise you. The two ends. That sucks. I yeah, I, I have two sucks. S's on my name on Instagram. It's terrible. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the same with me with Instagram and Twitter. Two <laughs> ends. I'm like, whatever, dude. I'm like, just Stan Man Thirty Four. You'll find it. I promise you. Yeah. All right. I I really. I really appreciate it. I I want to say, I said it multiple times, but I'm super proud of how where I started watching you and where you took it 
is is two different places and it's in the right direction and i want to to tell you that you're doing doing stuff right no i appreciate it man it, it means the world it really 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 does mean the world because it's a grind and you know now you don't get a lot of status a lot of words back sometimes yeah it's just behind I mean, the screen i tried to try to make them different because you get you get the you know probably the younger kids coming in saying that they're your biggest fan and it, it means something that people are looking at you like that but mm -hmm. at the same time like coming from i mean i'd like to think of myself as a, a young man coming from a young man who who's mm -hmm. you know actually putting in the words to say like you're doing stuff right and and just keep going no it's awesome and it means the world when it comes to people around my age so i appreciate you g and keep up your shit as well for real okay. i give you a lot of credit podcasting and reaching out so guys yeah. i try to i always try to do stuff and try to do cool stuff so i was happy um i could do this and i'm you know very fortunate that you have me on yeah i'm i'm trying to get carter on i want to talk to that man <laughs> <laughs> he won't he won't he's, respond to my tiktok dm <laughs> he he's something man he's always he's he's a busy little guy man you got to give him credit for yeah. what he knows at his age and the amount Is of effort like he puts into his 15 stuff. yeah i mean that's... no way no shot for me that's baller dude I'm, 15 I'm, i was i'm crumbling you know. i'm crumbling and crumbling at that that yeah right there not even like just the amount of like just the amount of like passion just has about what he did dude i was worried about chasing girls and basketball practice and like failing like you know honors biology or something yeah. like i wasn't building computers and talking to companies there's no chance yeah give them credit Get yeah. a lot of credit. All right. We'll wrap it up there. Uh, you guys can follow Stan on any social media. You just look up Stan Man 40, uh, 34. You'll find it. And, uh, yeah, uh, we appreciate you coming on, giving us these uh, insights into your life and letting us pick apart the brain up there. It's a good one. A good head on his shoulders. Very humble guy, and I appreciate him very much for coming on the podcast. Uh, till next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.